three supports in Perusia Slicer? Let's figure that out. Hey everyone, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the corner. Um, the new Prusa Slicer is out. It's got a bunch of great features in it. One of them is the paint on supports, but there's also a little trick that you can use to use tree supports. And I'm going to show you that right now. All right. So here I am at my computer and a friend of mine asked me to print this sword for a little game. He's got pop up pirates. I believe it's called. So what I'm going to do is take this sword and let's see if I can orientate it here and move that to 90 degrees. All right. Now here's what you got to do. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you've loaded in the uh, SL1, the, um, the resin printer. And then what you need to do is you're going to center it on your bed and you're going to put your supports on. Now, I don't believe you need a pad, and you can just go um, to fast, and it doesn't really matter what resin you pick, but then you're going to slice your model. You will have some tree supports here. So now what you got to do is you're going to go file, export, Export plate including supports. And we're just going to save this to our desktop for now. Save. Yes. All right. So now it's saved it with the supports. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your um, preferred printer. I'm going to print this in my uh, PLA profile I have for this. And two mil is fine. I'm going to go import STL and it's going to be from my desktop. And we are looking for my pop up pirate sword. Now, here's my pop up pirate sword. Supports, we don't need supports. We can try printing with a brim and then we'll slice it. And there you have it. That should be it. You just need to um, export this bad boy. And we should be good to print this sucker. Check out these tree supports. You know what? They actually do um, a fairly decent job of breaking off. That is awesome. Obviously, you'll have to do a little bit of cleanup, but it's actually not bad. As you can see, I'm just removing these suckers with my thumbnail for the most part. 
there's a couple in there that I'll have to um, cut out, but then do I have to even cut them out? I can probably just push them out. Look at that. That is not bad. And they all come out in one piece for the most part. That is pretty cool. Now what happens if your part is bigger than the build plate? Let's say this is, oh, I don't know, 300 say. Alright, so clearly that is much bigger than the build plate. Well what you can do is go into your print settings and let's just make this, my Chiron is 450, that's my biggest printer by 400 by 400 okay so I'm gonna rename this now uh, I think I'll just rename this tree supports so as you see I've already done it so so now all of a sudden you have this piece that's big enough to do this with so here let's go back to Put this back to where it was 100 we'll work with this little guy here but basically in a nutshell all you need to do is you need to go around the object for your pad and then you can do your tree supports on your build plate only and then you can just slice it and as you can see we have tree supports now What I want to do is actually here, let's uh, remove the supports. Alright. Okay, so see, here's our little sword here. So we're going to take our supports. Now we're going to add manual. And what we're going to do is we can manually edit a bunch of supports here. Alright. We're going to apply the change. See that? So now we've supported this side of the model. So what we're going to do now is I will um, we'll export this. And you're going to export including supports. And let's just go to desktop for now so I don't get confused. Yes. All right. Now what I'm going to do is... I am going to import the new model into my KP3S. Oh, and we are going to go down to my KPS PLA profile and my KP3S. So I don't need this sword here. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete everything on the build plate. Yes. And now what I'm going to do is import that STL that I had on my desktop. It's right here. Now see how I have the tree supports on one side? So this is kind of the thing that you can do is now we can actually do paint on supports on this side and compare. All right. Nice. And we have combination supports. All right. <coughs> so let's try printing that and see how it goes. So there you go. This is combined tree supports. And as you can see by the strain, the filaments actually um, absorb some moisture. There you go. So that's how you incorporate tree supports for an FDM printer in Prusa Slicer. 
So you can get your tree supports on part of your model. You can do regular supports on a different part of the model, depending what your situation is. So I hope this gives you another tool to add to your 3D printing toolbox. With tree supports, you can do them in Mesh Mixer, but then you have to open a different program. If you can do it all in one in just your Prusa Slicer and take care of it, I think you're in the win, right? This is a really good little tip for you guys. Um, I hope you guys try this out and use it. Even with this wet filament that you can see all the stringing and stuff, it still comes out really good. So I hope you like this video, this little tip I showed you today. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you're cruising through this channel, please hit subscribe button. If you have a comment about how to use tree supports efficiently in your sliced models, let me know. Until next time, peace out.